everybody. Welcome to this AWS on air episode of reInvent 2020. I'm Kirsten Dupart, your host for today's industry live chat, all about consumer packaged goods, AKA CPG. AWS consumer packaged goods are optimized at global scale. They operate via an intelligent supply chain and they create engaged connectivity. And here to talk to us today about AWS CPG, I have with me two very special guests. I've got David Ahuja, who's the head of Worldwide CPG, and I've got Elon Rob, Elon Rob, excuse me, who's a worldwide tech leader for CPG. David and Elon, welcome. Um, so you guys, let's kick this chat off with some introductions. I'd love to hear a little bit about you both. Um, David, if you don't mind, let's start with you. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Good. Uh, good. Thrilled to be here. So David Ahuja, I'm the head of strategy and go-to-market solutions for the CPG industry. Uh, background is I've spent 25 years in CPG, worked at Procter & Gamble and Walmart, so I've got retail experience as well. And my job is to really help our customers take advantage of the many, many uh, hundred plus uh, services, solutions, all of our partner networks, putting that all together to create business outcomes for our customers. So uh, thrilled to be here to talk about uh, my favorite topic of consumer packaged goods. Yes, so happy that you're here. Thank you, David. Um, and Elon, how about you? Hey guys, um, I'm Elon Rob. I'm the tech leader for CPG. So essentially um, David's technical counterpart. <laughs> uh, my background is engineering. Um, I'm a builder at heart and um, have been involved with uh, numerous startups in the past uh, several decades. Uh, my role at AWS includes uh, technical enablement, uh, translating the CPG vision and strategy to actionable execution plan, and of course, you know, building stuff. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so you guys, the CPG sector, with everything that has gone on this year, um, 2020, right, has, has faced tremendous challenges, um, as well as a lot of opportunity. Um, what trends can you guys talk about that you're seeing our CPG customers um, talk about? What are they telling you about as having the biggest impact on their organizations? Yeah, Chris, it's been a it's been an interesting year for CPG. To your point, good uh, good and bad, right? I mean, there's a lot of demand for toilet paper, and a lot of our CPG right. manufacturers are quite busy cranking that out. But mm -hmm. you know, interestingly enough, where where our engagement with CPG customers really began, it's it's first and foremost with their consumer with their customers. Uh, I'm sorry, with their employees. Um, uh, of trying to get their employees to work uh, from home, trying to get their employees to uh, be safe in the plants. And so there was a right. real immediate surge to take care of uh, their employees. Obviously, the second part was then their consumers, the shoppers that buy their products. Um, and there was a, a, an immediate disruption that happened in the supply chain where uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, um, you know, supplies to the, to the plants weren't there. And so products weren't flying off the, sh uh, off the manufacturing lines as typical, which meant products weren't at the shelf, which meant consumers weren't getting these products. And so uh, major, major pain point in uh, understanding uh, what uh, the supply chain network looked like. And then obviously listening to the consumers, right? Consumers had to send signals back to these companies on what, they needed what were the essential products, um, and so there's a lot of, you know, skew optimization work that these CPG companies had to do in the last uh, in the last eight to twelve months, um, and will need to continue to do right as consumer behavior right. continues to evolve and, and change. So it's been very disruptive for many many CPGs. Um, you know, significant. Uh, impact to their business and to their bottom line. And as I said to some, it's been positive in terms of, uh, you know, cranking out essential products for uh, to meet that consumer demand. Right. And um, you talked about pain points in the network. You talked about optimization. Um, are there recent innovations that are affecting the, the CPG technology strategy? So, you know, as, as David said, um, this has been a year of significant volatility and change for CPGs. On, on the technology side, um, this oftentimes resulted in focusing on technologies that help in the management and operations of supply chain, heightened focus on uh, forecasting, heightened focus on direct to consumers, both in terms of selling as well as uh, personalization. On the supply chain area, as, as David mentioned before, we've seen customers focus on, on smart factories, on uh, digital twins and track and trace, which are all technologies that help ship product faster and more more reliably 
Um, many of these technologies are driven by the continuous innovation in uh, IoT technology and IoT solutions that we have. On the forecasting front, we've seen um, a focus on demand forecasting. Again, driven, driven mostly by uh, the democratization of uh, forecasting models and uh, the fact that now um, they're much more accessible and, and you don't need to be um, a data scientist to uh, use them, so more, more auto ML. Additionally, we see a significant shift to uh, direct-to-consumer models, uh, DTC. So when you know, CPGs are trying to uh, stay connected to their customers, to their consumer, to their end customers, and, and the cloud here provides a, a really great mechanism for uh, innovation, uh, allows you to bring up storefronts and bring up presence that are um, direct to consumer in a very uh, quick manner and, and touch your end user, uh, the consumer. Yeah, that's um, super important, right? And you mentioned democratization and going direct to customer. Um, and actually customers are expressing an interest in, in that and in going direct to consumer. Um, I don't know, David, if you can maybe talk a little bit about how um, AWS is leveraging Amazon's experience to help customers build those kinds of um, capabilities. I know Elon mentioned um, the DTC. I don't know if yeah. there was more. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it, you can see it in the marketplace. There's a lot of uh, CPG companies that have uh, started up DTC sites to get products direct to consumers. And this is a, a bit unusual because there's a bit of a channel conflict for CPGs. They typically sell through uh, through retailers, but the demands of the consumers has driven uh, the, the need for them to do this, to, to get products to the consumers faster. Um, but also there's a lot of experimentation happening in the DTC space, right? And so these companies are coming to us, obviously because of our heritage of Amazon and our experience with you know, serving, uh, serving consumers uh, in a quality way. I know that every day in my front door, I have a, a stack of Amazon boxes <laughs> um, on my front steps, right? And, and I think, you know, what they're looking for is to understand how and what do we bring in terms of our platform to enable uh, enable them to be able to serve consumers in a quality way. Um, one of the things that we've done is something we're calling DTC in a box, which is how do we take some of the best capabilities of Amazon? Um, these are things like Amazon Fulfillment, uh, Amazon Pay, um, Amazon Fraud Detector, personalization that, that Elon uh, mentioned, forecast. And how do we bundle these things in a way that makes it seamless for a customer to, to leverage our partner network of e-commerce platforms um, that's out there along with Amazon innovative capabilities to create a fast, easy, seamless uh, delivery of a DTC platform. Um, how customers are looking at this platform is for uh, fast, uh, new to the world products that they don't want to run through a, a retail uh, you know, brick and mortar channel. And so instead they can, they can spin it up quickly, experiment, get feedback really, really fast from, uh, from the consumers and from the marketplace and make a decision if that product is something to um, push forward and continue or, you know, the, the beauty of it is it's, it's, it's a low cost uh, entry. And so they could throw that product out or tweak it and make adjustments to it. So um, I fully expect this is going to be, I mean, we see it already happening. E-commerce in general has just, you know, uh, right. took a big boom in this, in this, uh, uh, you know, challenging times. And I think you will see a lot more DTC coming out of CPGs as they bring a, a lot of really innovative products to the marketplace. Yeah, and I love that you're talking about that. Um, demands from the customers, as well as AWS's experience serving quality to those customers, as well as the pace of innovation and the things that, that we're trying to create to keep up um, and to help out. Um, we've seen a number of AWS services um, starting to really get traction in CPG. And right, we're smack in the middle of reInvent. We all know what happens at reInvent. They like to talk about fun new things. Um, can, can you guys speak a little bit to um, some of the services that you're maybe seeing having the biggest impact in this space? Sure, uh, I'll take that. So okay. um, we see we see uh, an increased focus on uh, consumer journey, uh, customer journey mm -hmm. in general, uh, which is which is really a differentiating attribute that CPGs have these days, especially in the online world, you know, uh, pandemic uh, experience is everything, right? The, the online shopping experience is, is hugely important. So, you know, whether it's, um, Understanding the the past to purchase, or or maybe consolidating the the personas, the many personas that um, 
users use um, and usage methods, whether you know mobile or laptop, whatever. Oftentimes, it's the same consumer just using different access uh, ways um, to access this information, right. and and personalization of the experience, as, as David said, you know, Amazon personalized um, catering to to the specific individual. So. One one service that uh, is gaining a lot of momentum is uh, graph databases, which are ideal for for um, describing a, a consumer journey and and the various methods that they use to access uh, the information. Uh, we've seen um, uh, a significant growth and interest in our Neptune database, which is a graph database as a result. And another area that's adjacent to that is uh, DUE, Digital User Experience. And, and the desire to, to customize, again, the, the customer outreach, right? So somebody has contacted you, and how, how, do, you, um, how do you manage that interaction? So, again, personalization. And, and we see how that translates into um, increasing usage of, uh, of Amazon Pinpoint and, again, Amazon Personalize. Uh, another area that CPGs are spending a lot of time on is data, um, specifically data analytics. You, you know, last year has been very, very data intensive. Yeah. Um, and and the high and it really highlighted the the need for data across all businesses, uh, business functions, right? Whether it's um, manufacturing or supply chain or marketing, uh, they need to um, quickly get insights uh, from the data that they have. Uh, so ML, machine learning, and and analytics, very much in focus these days. Uh, services just as uh, SageMaker and Amazon Forecast and Amazon Personalize and uh, and Glue and of course um, all of our database. Um, uh, offering uh, the RDS uh, service line are getting a lot of attention. Right, and you know you're talking a lot about um, machine learning and AI, which is um, not just a hot topic, but it's really useful, especially right now. Um, and and all of these services that are helping um, bring that focus uh, to the customer journey, to that consumer journey, like you're talking about. Um, and in fact, do are, do you guys have any examples of how um, CPG customers are using these services to transform their business? Yeah, and you have to be super smart to to keep track of all the different services that Elon just mentioned, right? So one of the challenges <laughs> that we have is we have a lot, right? We have a massive yep. ecosystem of of solutions and services. I mean, we we serve you know hundreds thousands of CPG customers, right? Big and small, um, and they all use the services in in different ways, right? I mean, it could be a, a large customer like a Unilever that that leverages us for their digital marketing platform to a small customer that's leveraging, you know, SageMaker to do very small models in their uh, in their supply chain network. Um, the thing that we say is we there there are three sort of core areas where customers um, leverage. Uh, one is in, we call make, move, and market. Uh, we help companies make products, move products, and market products. And um, the, the make, Elon touched on a bunch of things, especially around if you think of IoT and the need to modernize in, the, in that manufacturing environment. We've done a lot of uh, really interesting work with Georgia Pacific, um, and these are public references that you can read and get all the details on. Really interesting work on the use of IoT, the use of AIML inside the, the, the plant environment. Um, the, the move part, which is probably the one of the more complex part for CPGs, because they've got this uh, intricate you know, challenge of getting their products from their many plants to thousands of outlets, right? To, uh, they're sending it, if it's, especially if you're doing direct store delivery, you're shipping to, you know, a, a, a retailer that has 5,000 stores as an example, right? And you have hundreds of retailers. So complexity of supply chain is massive. And so a lot of what we're bringing our capabilities, uh, Elon mentioned forecasts. How do you help them really forecast the specific item to a specific store. That's the level of planning that occurs inside of a inside of a CPG. And so a lot of what we do is in this uh, supply network, supply planning um, with customers like uh, like a Kellogg's that we do a lot to help them with your trade funds management uh, as an example. Um, and then the last piece that Elon touched on, that end-to-end -end consumer journey, um, which is really the market part, there's two pieces to that. One is media. How do I spend my media dollars effectively to, to communicate to um, you know, a consumer of one? So 
uh, you're really more and more it's the, the, that mass messaging of, of print and TV is not as effective. I'm now communicating to David and, and I know when David saw my ad and how he responded to my ad. And so that effectiveness of, you know, leveraging our technology to help you with median. Uh, and then the second part of it is just the, the again, Elon touched on this, the personalization and the digital user experience of, um, you know, knowing when and where and how David experienced my brand across whether it's email, uh, text, or or on my website that I know David. And that's the, the graph database point that Elon mentioned, right? How do I keep control of that? And so all of that um, is part of our you know 160 plus services that make up the AWS uh, ecosystem, and uh, you know a, a key piece of how we do this is we do this with our partners who have expertise in various pieces of it and can put the right solutions together for our customers. Um, so uh, again, we serve large and small, uh, the very big biggest CPGs to we work with very small customers that are, are making that start to the cloud journey um, and, and helping them uh, with that move. Of course, I can't go without saying, I mean, a big piece of what we do with all of these customers is helping them move their old legacy, you know, data centers yeah. off uh, into the cloud. And uh, you take mm -hmm. that for, for granted, but, uh, you know, we're, we're our team, Elon and I and our team are focused. We're bringing industry expertise to help with business outcomes um, and much, much more focus on, on, you know, those, uh, you know, I'll call it industry specific decisions that require uh, special expertise to, to and, and insights to really solve them. Sure. And what I loved about what you were talking about, David, is wrapped up in that CPG ecosystem you were describing um, in all of those products and services, um, which, by the way, if, if anyone listening would like to find out a little bit more about, you can go to aws.amazon.com. We've got a products and services page um, if you wanted to look up anything that was mentioned. Um, but back to the ecosystem was really knowing our customers um, and using services to help us get to know them um, and other businesses have access to these same products and services, innovation, these enhancements. Um, and with all of that, you know, I mentioned earlier, we're, we're smack in the middle of reInvent here. <laughs> um, and at reInvent, we love to launch and talk about new, um, new enhancements, new innovations that we have. Um, are there new services? That, oh, did we lose Elon? <laughs> he said, I'm out of here. <laughs> Let's see if we can get Elon back real fast. Uh -oh. <laughs> he's part of he's part of our ecosystem. Yeah, <laughs> we, we need we need him to answer that one. Yes. Well, and if um you know if if while Elon's um, working his way back into our ecosystem, um you know we can get into the 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 reinvent services here in a minute. Um, but I don't know. Let's see here. David, maybe now would be a time when we can um, show show the. Oh, there's Elon. Hey, no. he's back. No, he's back. <laughs> you he's exited back. our ecosystem. <laughs> no, I am back. Perfect timing because I was just about to ask you uh, about this year's reinvent, um, and if there are new services. I think I know the answer to this. Um, that uh, our CPG customers should be really excited about, should be looking out for and looking into. Anything new? Yeah, new services. Uh, there's a bunch, a lot of new services. <laughs> uh, a lot of new stuff, as always. It's, it's, it's almost right. difficult to track what's happening. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of new stuff. There's, there's stuff that's um, definitely specific for CPGs. There's a whole um, new uh, set of products that uh, were announced in the industrial space. I just think of very many CPGs. Uh, most of them use ML you know, in some in some you know form or fashion, which is awesome um, because um, most of these also do not require also uh, data scientists. Uh, specifically, there's um, there's AWS wow. uh, Monitron. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, there's AWS Monitron, which is uh, an end-to-end -end system that detects abnormal machine behavior and enables predictive maintenance again um, without requiring requiring you to be a data scientist. There's AWS Panorama, which is um, a machine learning appliance and an SDK that uh, allows you to bring computer vision to on-premise, like shop floor. Uh, there's two there's two Lookout um, services. There's Amazon Lookout for Vision, which automates um, real-time visual inspection of your production line. So you can put it um, like on the shop floor as as products go through. 
Um, and again, no ML required, it will detect faults. And there is an Amazon lookout for equipment, which detects um, abnormal equipment behavior by analyzing uh, sensor data from, from a broad range of uh, industrial machine, again, using ML. Wow. So that's on the industrial side, yeah. Um, in the computer and container area, there's, there's two services which I think are, are um, important for CPGs, at least two services. One is Amazon ECS Anywhere, and the other is Amazon EKS Anywhere. Both of these allow you to run and manage uh, container-based applications in a hybrid environment, so both in the, on the cloud and on-premise using uh, virtual machines or uh, bare metal servers, and that allows um, CPG vendors who, who need that hybrid kind of workloads, uh, maybe close to the assembly line to be able to run those um, and still use a unified management and governance console, which is awesome. In the database area, we have um, Amazon Aurora Serverless V2, which is our uh, second version of Amazon Aurora Serverless. Uh, scales instantly to hundreds of thousands of transactions in a fraction of a second uh, with multi-AZ, multi-availability multi zone, availability, and, and again, no servers to manage because it's, it's serverless. And, and lastly, there's, there's two, and we talked about some of the analytics and NML, there's, there's two more that are, I think are interesting. Uh, one is uh, Glue Data Brew, which is a um, visual data uh, preparation tool that makes it easy to, um, to, to clean and normalize data and prepare it for analytics and machine learning. Uh, this used to be a very manual process, and now um, data analysts and data scientists can use um, a visual interface. And another visual interface is um, SageMaker Data Wrangler, which is, again, um, a tool that reduces the time it takes to aggregate and prepare data for machine learning, which is a big issue. And oftentimes, um, a large amount of time is spent on just getting the data to a point where it can be processed by ML. And, and Data Wrangler can reduce that from, from weeks to essentially minutes. It's really, really awesome technology. So. Um, these are probably the, the top services that I can think of. Um, I'll be publishing a blog on this, um, and you know, you'll probably in a couple of weeks, and you'll be able to read it and see. Oh, know, good! It is out there. Perfect. Yes, I will definitely. And I am such a visual learner. I love listening. Describe um, Glue Data Brew and the SageMaker Data Wrangler. Um, those are those of enhancements um, to those tools that we've got. Um, so lots of innovation. Um, enhancements like we've heard um, David and Elon talking about, um, all to really help the CPG experience, all super helpful services for our customers in order to help their customers. Um, so you guys, we're getting the top of our half an hour. Um, I, I can't, it's just kind of flown by here. Do you have any um, final takeaways or things that you want to um, mention? Yeah, you know, um, I think of it this way, CPGs care about two things, their brands and consumers. Um, technology and what we do is how we enable them to do that better. Um, and I, you know, Elon and I hit on these things already, but you know, what we're seeing are, you know, the, the, the innovators, the winners who will be around long-term are clearly transforming and they're, they've recognized that digital transformation and business transformation in a couple, you know, key areas is, is you know, necessary for right. survival and for success. And one is, and Elon touched on a lot of the innovation we've got in the industrial space around making your factories work smarter, better, faster for you is a, is a requirement for the future. Um, and we're gonna see factories transform. Um, the, the second one, and this is one just again in CPG that that you know we 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 talk about a lot and, and it's we've talked about it for 20 years and it's still hard to do but you know CPGs want to get their products their brands that they love to the consumers and what we're doing is leveraging our ecosystem of of, of again AWS services partners to really make that supply chain network uh, seamless um, and by the way that's what we know how to do because that's what Amazon does best. We're the best in the world when it comes to, to, to supply chain. Um, we're also best in the world when it comes to connecting with consumers and offering and serving consumers in a very personalized and relevant way. I mean, your experience when you shop on Amazon is seamless. Um, and, you know, that's what we want to do for our customers is how do we leverage the AWS services to really help them create that same 
seamless, personalized, relevant uh, experience. Um, and then lastly, we call this the intelligent enterprise. The way you run this, uh, all of these things across the, the CPG ecosystem is you know, really on two things. It's about data, which is, uh, you know, Elon touched about a lot of the things that we're bringing to make data easier uh, and accessible to data scientists and to the companies. And then the second is on AI ML. It's, it's how do you leverage technology to make smart decisions? And I hate to say it, but the computer can make better and faster decisions than, than we can as humans, right? And it's really about making that democratized in a way that's accessible to, to all of our uh, all of our customers. And that's really, you know, uh, that's really what we're about doing in CPGs, helping our customers uh, do all of this stuff, um, you know, faster, smarter, better, cheaper. Um, one more thing I wanted to add, you know, we talked a lot about services earlier. Uh, yeah. I wanted to just mention solutions as well. Um, there's really several ways that, that uh, we deliver solutions with our customers. Uh, one way is uh, we have uh, experts who, who can put together uh, the building blocks to build custom solutions for our customers. Uh, another way is that we work with our partners, and we mentioned that several times, um, and those partners work closely with AWS, and they have deep CPG domain expertise. Uh, they have tools and products that have already been developed and, and can solve customer needs in the CPG space. And you know, as I said before, lastly, we have... Um, AWS services and solutions that are designed for CPGs that are builders that want to build this themselves and can be easily implemented. Yeah, and you know, you guys have talked so much about some really incredible things going on um, for both enhancement of tools and services that we already have um, the CPG experience, but also that consumer experience. Um, I heard a lot of talk about um, enhancing the consumer experience and personalizing what that feels like for people. Um, and if if our listeners are like me and are super excited about everything, you know, I'm not a CPG or myself, um, but I might be after listening and talking with you two. Um, I definitely would like to learn more. And if you're like me, um, you can go to aws.amazon.com, like I said earlier, slash CPG um, to learn more specifically. So. David, Elon, um, that is it for us. We're at our half an hour. I just want to take a second to say thank you both so much for this conversation. Uh, it has been awesome for me to learn about some of AWS's roles uh, in the consumer package goods space. So I'm sure um, our listeners are probably feeling the same. Um, and to all of our viewers, thank you so much. Um, we hope you guys had fun too. And that's it. Awesome. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Kristen. Guys.